Welcome back. In this video, I will discuss process control block in operating system. In the previous video, I have discussed what is process and what are the states through which a particular process go through in its lifetime. I have put that particular link in the description below. Go through that particular video to understand the process state diagram or process life cycle. So whenever you create a process, a process will go through some different states like uh, new state, ready state, running state, waiting state and terminated state. Whenever a particular process goes from one state to other state, the state of that particular process has to be maintained properly. Because let us say that a particular process was running on CPU for some time. Uh, after that particular thing, it has been put into this particular waiting state. After waiting state, it will go into something called as ready state. Again, it will come back to CPU and then it will start running. So what should happen over here is whenever uh, it has been moved from uh, CPU to waiting state, uh, it must have completed some uh, CPU time already. So we need to continue from that particular point and then we need to execute here. So that is the reason we need to maintain the state of each of those particular processes in a particular data structure. That is what is called as process control block here. The process control block has the process state that is nothing but the state in which that particular process is currently running that is nothing but the process state here. The second one is it contains something called as a process number. So what is the process uh, which is currently running or what is the process uh, number for each and every process we will be given some number. So that is nothing but a process number over here. So what is program counter is uh, whenever we move a particular process from running state to waiting state or somewhere else the program counter contains the instruction to be executed next. So each and every process will maintain that particular information properly because whenever that particular process comes and start executing, we need to continue from where we left in the previous state. So that's the reason we need this particular program counter over here. The next one is nothing but the CPU registers. Whenever we execute a particular program, we need some set of we can say that the registers each of those particular registers may be having some values while executing in the first iteration before it moves to some other state. So whenever we come back and start executing, we need to reload those particular register values and then we need to start execution over here. So we need to maintain what are the values of that particular registers and so on. The next one is there is something called as the CPU scheduling algorithm. For that particular process, what kind of scheduling algorithm was considered, whether it is FCFS or SRTA for what? So that information is again stored into something called as the process control block over here. The next information is something like uh, memory management information, like uh, uh, what is the size of that particular process, what is the base and the limit register values, what is the size of that particular page table, what is the segment table and so on. All those particular information will be maintained so that uh, whenever you, you re reload that particular process again, we need to consider these things and then we need to start executing that particular process here. The next one is something like uh, accounting information. That is nothing but uh, how much amount of time that particular process was executing on CPU, how much amount of time it has used some different resources, how much amount of time it has uh, uh, completed the execution and so on. All those particular information will be stored into this particular accounting information state over here. So these are some of the components of that particular process control block. They are very much essential because whenever a particular process moves from one state to other state, when you start executing in the second iteration, we need to reload all this particular thing and then we need to continue executing that particular process over here. Moving a particular process from one state to other state can be shown with respect to this diagram. In this case, we are considering only the CPU switch from process to process over here. Let us say that there are two processes are there P0 and P1. So initially P0 is executing on CPU. After some time, uh, let us assume that uh, the P0 needs some uh, different uh, input output device service. So it will be moved from CPU to waiting state here. So when it is moved to CPU to waiting state, it will go into something called as a idle state over here. So whatever the current information about that particular P0 is available, that will be saved into something called as PCB0 here. Now, what is the advantage of doing this one? Whenever you reload that particular process or you want to execute that particular process P0 again, we need to reload this particular content and then we need to continue from there onwards. So when you save that particular contents onto this PCB0, uh, after some times it may happen that uh, P1 may start execution over here. So whenever P1 starts its execution, 
we need to reload the content of PCB1. PCB1 is nothing but what? Process control block for this particular process 1 here. So the content of that will be reloaded and then it will start executing where it has left in the previous iteration. So once it has made some request for IO devices, again it will go into waiting state. The meaning is we will remove this particular P1 from CPU and then we will put into waiting state here. So at this particular point of time, whatever the status is there about that particular P1, that will be saved into what is that called as PCB1 here again. So whenever you start executing this process again, we need to use this particular contained PCB1 and then we need to continue from there onwards. So after a certain amount of time, it may happen that uh, P0 completes its IO waiting and then it wants to execute again. So whatever the information we have stored here, the meaning is it may have already executed for uh, 10 milliseconds and it may have executed some 10 instructions. We need to start executing from the 11th instruction. So we need to reload the content of PCB0. It will say that already 10 were all executed. It will start executing from the 11th instruction and so on. This is how the CPU switch takes place from one process to another process. And whenever a particular process moves from CPU to waiting state or ready uh, state, it has to store its uh, uh, information into PCB. And whenever we want to execute the same process again, we need to reload the content of that particular PCB and then we need to start executing over here. In this video, I have discussed what is a process control block, also known as a process task block, and how a CPU switch takes place from process to process over here. I hope the concept is clear. If you like the video, do like and share with your friends. Press the subscribe button for more videos. Press the bell icon for regular updates. Thank you for watching.